Today I'll be talking about mean curvature flow of entire graphs evolving away from the heat flow. This is a joint work with Gregory Drugen. Introduction. We will consider the same initial data, so an initial graph u0 over the entire Rn into R with the C2 alpha norm of u0 bounded. C2 alpha is a little strong, we don't need it, but um, it's convenient. You probably can prove everything with C11. So the heat flow solution will be denoted by V, and so dV dt equals Laplace V, and V at time t equals zero is u naught of x. The mean curvature flow solution is denoted by U, and the u dt equals the expression on the right. Again, the initial condition at time t equals zero is u naught of x. So we start the heat flow, we start the mean curvature flow with the same initial data, and we see how they evolve. Both for the heat flow and the mean curvature flow, long time existence has been proven. Uh, for the mean curvature flow, it's a result of ecker husken from 1984, and the heat flow, it's, I would say, a classical result. The heat flow, there is a maximum principle saying that if the initial condition of two flows, one is strictly higher than the other, then as the flow evolves, this, the one that starts higher will stay higher than the one that starts lower. So there's no intersection. In the mean curvature flow, there's also a similar principle, and it translates as if you start with two surfaces that are disjoint, then they will stay disjoint under the mean curvature flow. In dimension one, so on the slide you see the equation of the previous slides with a general dimension. In dimension one, it writes as dv dt equals vxx, and the u dt is uxx minus ux ux uxx over one plus ux square. What is interesting is that you can write the last term as the derivative with respect to x of some potential. So this is particular to dimension one. The mean curvature flow is written as du dt equals uxx plus f of derivative with respect to x. In 2007, Narat and Taniguchi proved that the solution to the mean curvature flow tends to the solution to the heat flow. They have the estimate that the supremum over x in R of the norm between u of x minus t and v of x t is less or equal than c over square root t, as t is positive. So as t goes to infinity, the right-hand side goes to zero, and u approaches v. Um, let me say something brief about the proof. The proof uses a Green's function, and the fact that we have a potential fx lets us let them do integration by part and estimates with the Green's function gives you the estimates that. Uh, the supremum of u minus v is less or equal than c over square root t. Before I can talk about what happens to the mean curvature flow, let's recall a result about the heat flow. So in 1967, Repnikov and Eilerman show that when v of xt be a solution to the heat flow, there is a limit 
when t goes to infinity at the point x and the limit exists uniformly in x in Rn if and only if this limit of the average of u naught of y exists. So u naught of y is our initial condition. Bx rho is the ball centered at x with radius rho. And the one over Bx rho in front is one over the measure of the ball. So you read this as the average of the initial condition over larger and larger ball centered at x. So if the average of the initial condition over larger ball centered at x exists, then the solution to the heat flow would have a limit as t goes to infinity and will be the same as the average over larger balls. A uniform is in orange because you can put it in or take it out. So if you have a uniform limit or a uniform average over larger ball, then your limit is uniformly in x. If you don't have a uniform limit, second limit, then you don't have a uniform first limit. Moreover, the limit a of x is going to be constant if it exists. So the question is, is the result of Nara Taniguchi true for n greater or equal than 2? It has been partially answered. So yes, for u not rotationally symmetric by Nara in 2008. Again, if you have rotational symmetry, it reduces to dimension 1. And Nara did a lot of estimates on the Green's function for rotationally symmetric initial condition and rotationally symmetric solution of the heat flow and the mean curvature flow. In this talk, we will show that the answer is no in general. So if you don't have rotational symmetry and you are an n greater or equal than 2, we have some counterexample to that. That brings us to part 2 of the 